can't activate. I don't know. Hit that button before on accident and it started to do a regen, but it won't. I don't know. I'll just let it see. Boys, I will tell you what, last week was kind of a doozy. We had uh, several machines go down. One of them happened to be, uh, I would say, uh, the brand new TL12. You know, I've been praising that. I've recommended it to a bunch of people. And I still stand behind what I said originally about the TL12. I freaking love that skid steer. Sunday morning, we're headed to the, to the dealer right now to pick it up. They're nice enough to meet us there. Jim's meeting me so that uh, they're not open today, but it's, they're cool enough to meet me on a Sunday, bright and early, so we can get this taken care of. But I took the machine back there because I thought it was a, a, a reburn light on. And it turns out it was like a check engine light saying that there was something wrong with the emissions. And it turns out they had to order a bunch of stuff, but it was all warranty and uh, it needed to be updated. There was some software stuff, yada yada, some hard parts. Uh, it needed to be updated anyway. So I brought it down here, they took care of it. They had it done in a couple of days, but I left it here waiting for a new attachment to arrive that I had shipped to Global that I bought, um, not through Global, but through an online site. But I shipped it to them so that I could save like 500 bucks on shipping. And they were cool enough to, uh, you know, send it there because I mean, it takes their guys, got to run out there with the forklift and all that stuff. I mean, it's not really the biggest deal in the world, but I still really appreciate them letting me do that. It saves me a little bit of money. And now uh, I got a chance I'll run down there and pick up two birds with one stone. But let's go ahead and get down there and then we'll talk about what actually broke down on the machine. Hey buddy, I normally park this thing inside. I don't appreciate you leaving it out in the cold. Do you know how much one of these things costs? Eight bucks. Eight bucks. <laughs> On sale. On sale. It's all good to go. It's not flashing lights no more. <laughs> it says V-Belt on it. All right. <laughs> all right, Jim. Rough description of what happened. Um, we thought it was a regen light popping off, so we we're trying to let it regen. Turned out that was an error light and uh from injector nozzle the def def injector nozzle they replaced a wiring harness updated ecm control yada yada some other stuff uh it's not a bill in there right <laughs> better better not be jim then hook up my my do that there we go another note you know we do have all these nice new machines here hey i think you need a few more prime decks. Four seventy-five looks nice. Let's go buy a tractor. Are these all three hundreds? These are three hundreds. That's a one seventy-five over there. Oh, Put it in the truck. And they're all stage five too. Oh. So that all that means. You is know that, what? That's stage five too. This? Yeah. Stage five. Stage five. So there tier is, five. No. Stage five. So it's tier four. Oh. Stage five. Stage five means they're in yeah. That's all stage five is. Stop beeping. No. Well, let's let this thing warm up and we'll walk around. I showed my dad the uh, undercarriage on that video I took the other day and he's like, oh damn. This is what I really want to get right here. I thought you weren't going to be able to get one of these for a while. What the heck? The other one's already gone, huh? This one came down. I got yeah, the other one's gone. I got a guy oh. coming down on Tuesday. <laughs> Looking at this, we got two more coming in. I feel like that one looks way smaller than this one for some reason. Doesn't it? It's a head <laughs> They got a tight fit for him. I'm having him back the machine out because that one over there is like half a million and oh, so is the one in front of it. And then, what's, oh, this one, yeah, this is 180, whatever, 200. He can squeeze that little machine out of there for me, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I'll get the ramps.
Hey. You're about to touch. Uh, Alright. Keep coming. totally forgot I gotta add my secondary fuel I'm in the red on the deck There's nothing convenient about depth but at least they do come with a jug that's got a nice breather on it it's half tank There we go, now I don't have to touch up for another 4,000 miles. I just got home. I'm just gonna pop the cab on it and see what all I got into. Uh, see what kind of new parts might be visible so you guys can uh, get a better understanding of what happened. As far as I know, all skid steer cabs, they freaking lift up now. This takes two bolts, 15 16 wrench for this guy, and then simple as that. Put your safety in it, and let's see what's going on. Before I go in there, I just I've gave a lot of confidence to people. I would say when they're trying to buy a skid steer, and I tell them. My experience is with the TL12, and it's always been good experience. For a skid steer, this thing has been outstanding. Sure, we don't have a lot of hours on it. We've had it for a year and a half. But other than this one issue that came up, and we do have a leaky um, sight glass right there, I hopefully, I don't know if they got around to fixing it. They might have forgot it. I have to address that on my own, but that's not that big a deal. But long end of it, it was a Sunday. And Rick, the parts manager, he wasn't at the office, so he couldn't give me the official, you know, in-depth what they changed. But from my understandings of talking to him, the def injector was leaking. Uh, could be caused by early shutdown and not letting it cool down enough. But they say do not let these def engines idle too much because it'll clog it up there. Basically, these things are supposed to be saving the planet of emissions. And they exhaust a lot of resources trying to develop these, engineer them, build them. And I, it might be a wash, to be honest with you. Because I think early common rail, you know, just with a catalytic converter stock form, burned really, really clean. And I didn't have no problems with, you know, walking around one of those that was idling. But a deaf engine, ugh, man, that'd kill you. But they did need an update. I think it was a software update. Might have solved this early on. But it ended up being, I had to change a couple hard parts and then that overnight some stuff. I dropped this thing off on a Friday morning. Told me on a Monday, I believe, that they needed overnight some stuff. And on Tuesday evening the following week, after I dropped it off, this thing was back together and ready to go. But uh, I had ordered that attachment right there to uh, send it to Global's address because the machine was right there. And it actually saved me quite a bit of money by sending it to them rather than sending it to a, uh, a private address instead of a commercial 
But just looking at some of the stuff, it all got dusty on the road trip home because it was about 75 miles, uh, give or take. And so all the dust that was just kind of on the machine got over everything, so you can't really tell what's new. But I would guess that that thing is your def injector up there. Uh, it looks kind of clean, so we're going to go with that. And then I noticed this guy down here, I don't know if this was a new part that they swapped out, but it's got some writing on it that's 1357, I don't know, that might be something new, might not. But they had to swap out a couple other things. I'm not going to act like I know exactly what happened, but that's what they told me. And since the check engine light came on, it raised the you know, fact that I needed to get this thing serviced and found out there's a service bulletin for this exact issue. So now it's got the update, so that shouldn't happen again. Uh, so that's kind of nice to hear. And when I called them, I told them, hey, I got this light on. And they're like, oh, I think that's just trying to do a regen. And I was like, well, the filter, because you can hit on the dash up there, it shows that it's clean. I'll go ahead and I'll tip this back down so I can show you. Really nasty beep that you just heard. So right here, you have a force regen button. So I was like, oh, I'll just hit that. But that wasn't doing anything. And I just kept having this stupid little light came up here. And it was very annoying. I'll splash it on you guys. But I hit this center button. And it says how much my soot cookers blocked up. And it showed it's in the green. It's still the exact same spot that it was. So I was like, it's not trying to regen, so I don't really know what the problem is. And I just send them the serial number to the machine. They pull it up on the computer, and they can log into the actual ECM on the machine with their computer at the shop and see what actually is wrong with it. And they saw that, you know, oh, we got to do an update on it. There's actually some failed parts. Center down. Now this machine's got look at it again I believe it's 450 hours 458 hours so relatively low hours but emissions man there was a time when they weren't around but I'll tell you what the horsepower that these machines have for their size and all that and the same thing goes for the trucks those things are dishing out more horsepower than they ever have in a stock form and still dealing with the emissions the life of the overall engine might be lessened but you're getting so much more out of it while they're working and that goes to show with like this thing you know it's it's got good horsepower for what it is and it's still having to breathe through that stuff so again i don't know if it's helping the planet so much having this def involved it seems like a couple steps in the right direction as trying to make clean burning stuff but then most of the time if it takes you four steps forward you're coming back three so I guess you're limping along, getting a little bit farther with it, but at the end of the day, it might just be a wash. So I'm gonna get this thing back together and load it off the trailer so I can try out that new attachment right there, boys. I think I'll, I gotta get that set up. Make some, make some cool stuff with that. But anyway, I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, the experiences that I've had with the TL12 to date are still good. I like this machine. I'm still gonna recommend it to people. If you have uh, emissions and stuff that fail, that's why you know, if I would have bought this thing used, it would have sucked because I would have paid out of pocket. But these boys just went ahead and took care of everything under warranty as they should. Uh, no questions asked. You know, done deal. Dropped it off. They called me when it's done. That's I really appreciate how those guys do business down there. And uh, the fact that I could go in on a Sunday and take care of it. I like that friendship. Plus, having that big ship down there. They treat you good. So, but anyway, check out Global Machinery. Check out Takahushi. There's a lot of skid steers out there. Um, a skid steer at the end of the day is still, you know, a multi-purpose Swiss Army knife of a tool. They are good at pretty much everything, but they're not a dedicated to just one thing. So you can't really expect the world out of something that is designed to do everything. So if you want it to do everything, it's going to do that. But just not as good as a dedicated prime tech. I'll tell you that much. So if you're going to mulch, get a prime tech full time. No, I'm just kidding. We'll see you guys in the next one though. Thanks for watching and uh, stay safe out there.